Hello and welcome back to another video. Today we are in a purely hypothetical beyond visual range engagement between a Pakistani JF-17 and an Indian Mirage 2000. Sadly, there is no Indian skin for the Mirage 2000 in War Thunder. Both aircraft are equipped with the most optimal setups to maximize the amount of BVR missiles they can carry. On the Mirage 2000, this comes out to 6 Mika EM and 2 Magic 2, whereas the JF-17 carries 4 SD-10 missiles and 2 PL-5 E2. Alright, so here we are in the cockpit of the JF-17 and as you can see, it's a pretty modern cockpit featuring three big MFDs. We have the Mirage 2000 somewhere in front of us according to the radar warning receiver, but we can't see him on radar yet. He should have spawned a little more than 100 kilometers away, which is way past the range that our TWS mode can pick up anything. We could switch to a high PRF mode to increase the range, but the JF-17's radar does not have an appropriate TWS mode. Instead, I will just wait until he's in range. HDN modes have other downsides anyway, which is why I try to avoid them. Our missile, the SD-10, is quite potent, with its range basically matching the M120. And our opponent, while featuring two missiles more than we have, is using Mika EM, which are absolutely great missiles when it comes to within visual range combat, but they lack the range of other missiles in their class. Okay, so we have passed enough time to where we can finally spot the Mirage about 60 kilometers away. Let's lock him and fire our first SD-10. I'm assuming that he also fired a missile, so we are immediately going defensive. Just a slight dive to the side as I want to keep tracking him with my radar until my SD-10 is close enough to switch to its onboard radar. As a quick side note, from these ranges, both mine and his missiles are not very dangerous. I basically only fire mine to force him to defend, otherwise he could very quickly push into territories where the range of his Mika becomes a non-issue. That's why, while I'm defending, I'm not too worried about this missile warning on my RWR. As you can see, the missile quickly starts trading behind me, which is my signal to go nose on again. So now I'm pointing my radar to where I think he might have gone. This takes a bit of guesswork as I'm pretty sure we both have lost each other as I'm not getting any pings from his radar. And while I do seem to find him relatively quickly, I'm having trouble getting a clear track. This is because he's still defending from the missile I sent earlier which puts me in a great position. As you've just seen here, sometimes you fire a missile to gain a positional advantage without expecting to actually hit them. Because now as he's trying to turn around to fire at me, I could already send another SD-10 to force him to stay defensive if I didn't lose my radar track here. And despite my best effort to find him again, he manages to actually track me and send a missile of his own. Which is why I'm immediately diving away even before my RWR lights up like a Christmas tree. As you can see, we made the correct assumption and this time the Mika is much more dangerous as it's fired from much much closer than last time which is why I'm pulling a little bit harder than I should on my stick. Once we have the missile on our 9 o'clock, I just drop some chaff and climb for a better position, which seemingly did the trick. Let's put our aircraft towards the enemy again as quickly as possible so we can get the first shot off. This will be the third of our four radar guided missiles so I am getting increasingly desperate. Luckily, I had no issue finding our opponent, but sadly, he was also able to find me with his radar, which is why I'm diving down again. But as you might be able to see there in the distance, his missile just went straight into the ground, which is the perfect opportunity to push him while he's defending against my SD-10. And this last SD-10 secures the win of the first round for the JF-17, although I was so anxious that I already spooled up the PL-5 just in case.
Alright, here we are for the rematch. Nothing has changed about the engagement parameters or the loadouts. We have the Mirage right to our front again and he will be on my radar any second now. Just as last time, we sent a missile to keep him occupied while defending against his missile. It is very rare for these first two missiles to ever connect, although I would have certainly enjoyed if it did. Let's go back to our defensive position and we can already hear his missile logging me, which means it is about 16 kilometers away, a little less than 10 miles. The reason we dive down is that lower to the ground the air is denser, which means the missile loses more speed because of the higher resistance. That makes it easier to defeat them. And looking out to the window I can see that he is doing exactly the same. As soon as I noticed that the missile starts trailing behind me, I turned back so I can quickly find him with my radar again, which I'm having trouble with because I'm not exactly sure where he went and I also start seeing something other than him on my radar, possibly an old missile, and on top of that he's also still defending. I think the biggest mistake my enemy does here is that it takes them way too long to actually defeat my missiles, which gives me plenty of time to reposition, find them with my radar and plan a good missile shot. Repeatedly doing this puts him in a worse and worse position, it's like a stacking debuff. That doesn't mean he has lost the fight, but it makes it increasingly more difficult for him to actually fire back at me. By the time I actually get a decent firing solution, he has also found me, which means there's probably a Mika on its way to make my day worse, so back into a dive we go. As you may notice, in most of my dives I try to keep my radar on the Mirage for as long as possible to give my SD-10 the best possible guidance. They have the ability to use inertial guidance to intercept the target, but it's not super accurate and doesn't react to sudden direction changes made by the opponent. This is now the range where his missile starts becoming actually dangerous, but I'm desperate to get a good SD-10 off, so I decide to pull into his Mika, which, by the way, you should not usually do unless you know you can time it correctly, and defeat it by swerving left and right, which quickly makes it bleed off all its energy. Despite my effort, I do have considerable trouble finding him, likely because he's hiding behind these small mountains in the distance. In any case, you can see that the missile warning is now coming from behind, according to my radar warning system, which means that it has passed me and is no longer dangerous. Once I find him, I'm ready to fire a missile immediately, but I want to wait for the best possible shot because it is already the third of my four missiles. So I'm waiting for him to slightly turn into me while I close the distance. As soon as I see the signs of him turning, I fire my SD-10. I can see him dive behind the mountain range in front of me and subsequently my missile hitting said mountain. Following him now means I'm getting dangerously close to a plane that is much superior in a dogfight. Not only because his Mikas are certainly dogfight capable because of their thrust vectoring, but also because his flight performance is much superior to mine and his Magic 2 is a much better close range missile than my PL5 E2. Trying to find him here is pretty hard and I'm making a very crucial mistake. You can see how I'm glued to my radar and my radar warning system trying to find him, whereas I could have probably spotted him much much faster if I just looked outside for once. We actually circle each other a couple of times before we finally face each other, but it's much late for me to dodge the Mika coming my way.
Thanks to all of my YouTube members and for all of you who haven't already, check out my other videos and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.